Hey guys, it's General Heed here. How's everyone doing today? So, we are pretty much back to business now after a little fun-filled weekend of some <laughs> uh, strange videos, <laughs> um, bizarre stuff. But anyways, what better way to get back to business than to resume our weapon comparisons. And the most popular request for the next weapon was the Fuel Rod Gun. So that is what we'll be comparing in today's video. Now, as always, we will only be comparing the classic Halo games, not the, uh, well, classic including Halo 4. We cannot compare any of the ones on Xbox One only, such as Halo 2 Anniversary or Halo 5, because there are no mod tools that exist to compare it. I mean, technically Halo 5 didn't have, like, a fuel rod gun until later in the game, I think. It was, like, a DLC weapon. But that's beside the point. We're only going to be comparing Halo 1, 2, 3, Reach, and 4. We won't be doing ODST because it's the same as Halo 3, but we're not going to spoil it too much. So, without further ado, we're going to get right into Halo 1. So, Halo 1's fuel rod gun is, well, interesting. Because, initially, it was actually only a campaign weapon that only grunts could use. You were not able to wield it at all in the OG Xbox version of Halo 1. It was only until the PC release of Halo 1 that you could actually use the fuel rod gun in multiplayer. Technically, it's called a plasma cannon in the game files, not a fuel rod gun. But anyways, let's take a look at the stats for it. So technically, each fuel rod has an infinite range, technically, but it's affected by gravity a lot at a scale of 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, I'm not exactly sure like how you would interpret that, but basically it causes it to arc a lot, and it just drops. It, does, it doesn't shoot very far if you fire forward. But it has a velocity of 16 uh, in-game world units per second, which gradually slow down to 10 over time. Uh, it basically has a fire rate of 2.2 rounds a second, uh, if you keep spamming the trigger, even though it is single fire. Uh, and each fuel rod does 30 points of damage, of explosion damage. It does not have any impact damage, so that's zero there. So overall, it only does 30 points of damage. And each time you fire, it generates 0 0.3 uh, units of heat. So you get about four or five shots off uh, before it overheats. And with all, the, it's a battery-based weapon in Halo 1, so you have a total of 28 rounds total before you can't fire the fuel rod gun anymore. So that's our baseline for Halo 1. Going to Halo 2, the fuel rod gun does make a return, and it is actually, by default, usable to the player now, but only in campaign. There are no multiplayer maps where you can use the fuel rod gun, uh, unless you count like the PC version of Halo 2, where you could, um, where the example map you could add a fuel rod gun to it. But yeah, so the fuel rod gun is different, a lot different actually. <laughs> Aside from like visual appearances, it's also no longer battery based, it's rather ammo based now. But as for its stats, its max range is no longer infinite, only 80 world units. Uh, however, its shots are no longer affected by gravity anywhere near as much as Halo 1. You can pretty much fire pretty far and the arc is pretty minimal. It only has a gravity scale of 0 0.025, um, which I don't know how quite how to interpret that, but basically you, you can it's it's like 50 times, almost 50 times, not as affected by gravity as Halo One. Uh, the velocity is a little slower. Initial velocity of 15, slowing down to 6.5 over time. Fire rate has increased a little bit though. Damage has increased a lot. Damage is now 100 for the explosion. And the actual impact of the fuel rod gun, if you get a direct hit, does 90 points of damage as well. And since it's ammo based now, it can have 5 rounds loaded at once with a maximum of 30, including the 5 loaded. So 25 in reserve, technically. So that is Halo 2's fuel rod gun. Now, the next game to bring it back is Halo 3. It was actually quite rare in Halo 2, but a lot a lot more common in Halo 3 now as far as appearances and campaign, and it's usable in multiplayer now as well. Uh, as in, like, you could either forge it or uh, set it as a spawn weapon in custom games, I'm pretty sure. But uh, visually, it's it looks pretty similar to the Halo 2 if you're out of gun still, um, which is typical of a lot of Halo 3 weapons. As for its stats, well, it's also quite similar to Halo 2's in a lot of ways. So its max range is also the same, 80. It's... Uh, Grabby scale is also the same, so it doesn't arc as it arcs about the same amount as Halo 2, but of course nowhere near as much as Halo 1. Uh, velocity is still the same, starts at 15, slows down to 6.5 over time. Fire rate's also 2.5. Damage is also um, 
Actually, damage is reduced. It is now 60 points of explosion damage. And that's it, actually. There's no... There's no impact damage. So Halo 3's Fuel Rod Gun only does 60 points of damage total, it seems. Um, at least I could not find any impact damage. It, the field was blank, so... Which is actually uh, not too surprising, because if I recall, the rocket launcher was the same in Halo 3. Um, at least I think it was Halo 3. It might have been Halo 2. One of, the, one of the Halo games did not have impact damage with the rocket launcher. Uh, but everything else is the same as well for the rounds loaded and maximum. So after Halo 3, like I said, we're skipping ODST because it's completely identical to Halo 3's. Not just in appearance, but also in stats as well. So there's really no need to compare ODST. So we're just going to go straight to Halo Reach. Which uh, brings quite a few changes to the appearance of the Fuel Rod Gun, uh, visually speaking. Uh, but stats-wise, well, and there's also a few changes there too. So stats-wise, uh, a lot of the basic things are the same, such as max range, gravity scale, and velocity. They're all identical. Uh, fire rate's also the same. Damage is the same as Halo 3 as far as explosion damage goes, so 60 points there. However, Halo Reach does bring back impact damage which has 100 points of impact damage, meaning if you get a direct hit on someone or an, on an enemy, you'll be doing 160 points of damage total with a Fuel Rod Gun in Halo Reach. And everything else after that is basically the same. Uh, you could have 5 rounds loaded at any given time with a total of 30, including the uh, currently loaded rounds. So that is the Halo Reach Fuel Rod Gun. It is more or less, it's like a mix of Halo 2's and Halo 3's Fuel Rod Gun. Um, mainly because it shares like the impact damage from Halo 2, a uh, similar impact damage at least, but it, the damage values itself are pretty similar to Halo 3's. So that is Halo Reaches. Now, the next game to feature the Fuel Rod Gun and the last game that we'll be comparing is Halo 4's Fuel Rod Gun. So Halo 4's Fuel Rod Gun visually is kind of like an improved Halo Reach Fuel Rod Gun which is pretty typical of a lot of Halo 4 stuff. Kind of like how Halo 3 is like improved Halo 2 uh, visuals, Halo 4 often is improved Halo Reach visuals. So that is why the Fuel Rod Gun in Halo 4 looks pretty similar to uh, Halo Reach's. But stats is actually pretty interesting. There are some changes in the basic stats this time around. Uh, its max range and gravity scale is still the same, but like many Halo 4 weapons, the velocity is actually increased this time. It starts at 19.5 world units a second, and then gradually slows down to 8.45 world units a second. Whereas in most previous games, it starts at 15 and slows down to 6.5. And in Halo 1, 16 and then slows down to 10. Making uh, Halo 4's Fuel Rod having the fastest initial speed, uh, but not necessarily the fastest final velocity. Uh, its fire rate, though, is still the same, and damage is still the same as Halo Reaches. 60 points of explosion damage and 100 points of impact damage, for a total of 160 points of damage. And, of course, its rounds loaded and rounds maximum is the same. So basically, a Halo 4's Fuel Rod Gun is like a faster uh, Halo Reach Fuel Rod Gun, um, you know, by comparison. So, those are all the games we can compare. So with that in mind, which Halo game has the best Fuel Rod Gun? Well, I would have to declare that Halo 2, this fuel rod gun, is the best. Um, and that is because, well, actually, like, most of the stats are almost the same. Uh, and technically, Halo 4 does have a faster fuel rod gun than uh, Halo 2's, as far as the velocity of the shots. But that's not enough to make Halo 4 at the edge. What gives Halo 2 the edge, uh, and the definitive winner in this case, is that... Halo 2's Fuel Rod Gun has the most damage. It has 100 points of explosion damage and 90 points of impact damage. So if you get a direct hit on an enemy, you are doing 190 points of damage total uh, with a direct hit. Whereas with a direct hit with, on a Halo 4 or even Halo Reach Fuel Rod Gun, you are doing 160 points of damage. So it's 30 points less damage than Halo 2's as far as direct hits go which is important when using against vehicles and other stuff like that. So that is why I am declaring Halo 2's Fuel Rod Gun the best of the entire series. As for the weakest Fuel Rod Gun, that would have to be Halo 1's Fuel Rod Gun, which is a little surprising because usually Halo 1's weapon sandbox is like the most OP and like everything's like super powerful, but in this case Halo 1's actually the weakest and even like feature-wise also like the worst and like the most limited uh, compared to the other Fuel Rod Guns. 
But yeah, so one fun fact before we end this: um, Halo 4 is actually the only Halo game that actually calls the fuel rod gun a fuel rod gun in the uh, game files. Uh, Halo 1 calls it a plasma cannon, and all the other Halo games call it a flak cannon. So just a little fun fact there. But yeah, so hopefully you guys did enjoy this, and if you found this to be interesting, as always, make sure to leave a like, and you know, let me know what you want to be compare next. We still have a few weapons to go, so uh, just let me know in the comments what you want to compare next, and I'll do my best to get around to it soon. But other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time. Bye guys!